Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show. Two days ago, I did a video that I thought would be a really fun concept to do. I thought of it a long time ago, put a lot of work into it, and that was Sexiest Album Covers Part 1. I did that two days ago. And uh, I'm pretty upset about it because, unfortunately, YouTube, uh, like, flagged it. Um, and they pretty much won't really allow it to be seen unless... You unless you really look for it uh they will not publicize it uh you have to be over a certain age i think it's 18 and i think you have to subscribe to my channel to even see this video um again i did it two days ago sexiest album covers part one and the weird thing to me is there's no gratuitous nudity in there in fact there's really no nudity at all um the the covers are classy uh, they're they're favorite covers of mine they're not like they're dirty or anything like that and uh i don't know if somebody complained to them or something so very disappointing now there was going to be a part two video and i'm looking at it right there i think i did around 20 album covers i got another 40 there that i was going to do quickly as a part two and again this is a, a fun video light-hearted and these are all very famous covers, and none of them are grat gratuitously sexual. I mean, you see more on a, a broadcast TV show like Friends than you see on that video. So I don't understand it, but uh, it is YouTube, and you know I'm on their platform, and I'm lucky to be on that platform, so they control it. So I wanted to express my feelings of disappointment, and I don't know why this is happening. I will do a part two, but I'm not going to do it right now. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll wait a, wait, wait a week or so um, to figure out a way to do this. Uh, but it's very unfortunate in today's world that you can't even talk about, I guess, sexy album covers. I don't know. Anyway, uh, coincidentally, yesterday I was off, and I didn't feel like going to record stores. I'm really trying to slow my buying down. But I went to a thrift store. And when I went into the thrift store, there was nothing really there. And I just said to the guy I, on an off chance, I said, you got any 8-tracks? Because I had fixed my 8-track player, and I've been listening to 8-tracks a lot lately, and I'm having a really good time with it. And he goes, yeah, I got a whole box in. Let me go get them for you from the basement. Now, when you look for 8-tracks retail, 90% of the time it's like Engelbert Humperdinck and things like that. And, of course, you really got to look at each 8-track because... They're so old, a lot of them won't play, and I've had that problem. But yesterday, I did pretty damn good. I bought nine A-Tracks, and these are all what I would call major, major A-Tracks. Um, and I've tested out all nine, and eight out of the nine so far play really well, although one of them just kind of broke, so it may only be seven out of nine. We'll have to see. So uh, let me show you the A-Tracks. Uh, they are kind of cool, and I should show you why I kind of enjoyed them. They're really fun. So I just listened to its entirety before uh, an old favorite Charlie Daniels Band album of mine from 1977 called Min Midnight Wind. This is a really good Charlie Daniels album as well. Title track especially is amazing. They redid the title track on the best of. So this is the only way to hit the original title track, Midnight Wind. But uh, this is what it looks like. And if you can see it right there, you kind of can. There it is. And then this is the track listing. Now, one of the things that I love about eight tracks is they they change the order of the songs. So if you know these albums inside and out like I do, it's like a total new listening experience because the songs are in a completely different order. And then every once in a while you get that split there, like Sugar Hill Saturday Night is split into two. But that's the only one. And I got to tell you, it sounded great. And I loved it. So, uh, Midnight Wind from the Charlie Daniels Band. Hopefully, David, this stuff is not going to fall. Now, it is not easy to find some of these other ones. So, let's show you this one. This is Love You Live from the Rolling Stones. And this, as you can see, it says Double Play. And if you look, and uh, we'll go right there. It is Double Play, Love You Live, Rolling Stones Records. Uh, the order of the songs a little bit different right there. Um, in fact, very much so different. So I have not listened to this complete A track, just bits of it. But yeah, it's a completely different order, although they did keep Elma Combo on side three, which was a good move. So uh, there you have it. Love you live on A track. 
the Rolling Stones, a favorite live album of mine. But I saw them for the first time in 1975, so that really is from that tour, the 75-76 tour. Here's another double play Rolling Stones A track. This is Hot Rocks, equal to two. Can you see there? Where it is? Uh, equal to two LPs, Hot Rocks, and on Abco. And there it is, and there is the song listing. Yep, right there. Pretty cool to have on a track, I gotta say. And uh, there you have it. So that was a great find, too. Let's put that guy right up there, and let's do another one. How about this one? Fluid Mac Rumors on a track. And there it is. Pretty cool. And this one on the back. And there is the playlist. And uh, different. So like I said, a completely different listening experience. And it's kind of fun. You know, you listen to it, you're like, it's jarring. You're like, whoa, what the heck is that? But it's totally different. Uh, I found two Bruce Springsteen eight tracks that play, and these are good ones. Uh, Darkness on the Edge of Town, right there, and there, and there is the program again. Eight tracks have four programs, so you don't have to listen to the whole thing. You could hit the program button; it goes right to the next one, and no splits. So uh, these eight tracks are pretty good. Uh, in the sense that they don't fade out, click, and fade back in, which a lot of the 8-tracks do. And let's stick that right over there. And then the classic Born to Run on the 8-track. Right there. And let's see the track listing for that one. And there's your split right there. She's the one part one, fades out, clicks, she's the one part two, but only one. And then... Uh, Pretty cool. So you can see completely different track listing. Meeting Cluster River is the second song. Um, so it's just something different. And they sound pretty damn good, i got to tell you. Now, I think these are probably the rarest ones or possibly the most valuable. I haven't looked them up. But here's Led Zeppelin 2. On 8-track. Atlantic Records. And here's the program on that. And there's a split on Bring It On Home. And the album ends with Moby Dick. So there is Led Zeppelin 2 on a track. And how about Led Zeppelin 3? This is the one that just broke. I was messing with it and that uh, silver thing broke. So I gotta see if I could fix that. Otherwise... We'll see what happens. There's Zeppelin 3. No spinning wheel on the cover of this one, of course, on A-Track. And here's the program. And no splits on that. The album ends with That's the Way. So, uh, yep. Zeppelin 3. And one more. This was the only one when I tested them that really didn't play that well. And that was this one, In Through the Outdoor, from Led Zeppelin. Pretty cool. Um, and this would be a, a latter day A track, I guess, right? When this came out, so uh, it's kind of a cool find. And there's the song listings right there, no splits in through the outdoor. And the problem with this one, if you want to learn about A tracks, there's a sponge in these, and this sponge is really flat. So, what's happening is when I play this, it plays perfect, but it doesn't, you hear uh, the other track as you're listening to it. So I need a new sponge on that. So there you have it. Nine eight tracks. And let me uh, bring this closer. You can get a good look at them. There's the nine eight tracks. And you probably want to know, what did I pay for them? Um, and I paid $2 a piece. So it cost me 18 bucks at a thrift store on Long Island. Didn't have them displayed. I just happened to say to the guy, hey, you got any uh, eight tracks? And he's like, yep. Pulled up the box, and it wasn't Inkelbert Humperdinck. It was Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, Bruce Springsteen, Charlie Daniels, and Fleetwood Mac. He had other ones as well that I didn't buy that clearly wouldn't play because the sponges were really shot. And I don't feel like uh, fixing all these things. 
So there you have it on the Alan Rosenberg Show, a little side video of a haul of nine, eight tracks that are all really good ones. So I hope you kind of enjoyed this. Um, I will see about doing that part two. I'm looking at them. I got like 40 albums and CDs all prepped. And now I got to figure out how to do that sexiest part two. But we'll see what happens. Uh, thanks for watching. Definitely hit subscribe if you're new to my channel and you enjoy it. Because this sexy video is a really good example. Nobody has seen it except for the subscribers. So uh, that's because of YouTube. Anyway, that's about it. Have a great night, and I'll see you next time on Alan Rosenberg Show.